Shalom, all praises, blessings, glories, and honors to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to my elder apostles and bishop elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth as well as men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy, to the elect of the nation of Israel, who may so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the seed line of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom is scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. To you I say Shalom. And Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Rataza. This lesson is edifying and informative. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come, the end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near. And not descending again at the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and the abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh that smiteth. Verse 25. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. But when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a womb with child, and they shall not escape Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 26 mischief shall come upon mischief and rumor shall be upon rumor then shall they seek a vision of the prophet but the law shall perish from the priest and counsel from the ancients in the news from the RT, various articles. A NATO member state weighs in on proxy war against Russia. Global political elite skipping Davos, which is today. Speaking about the Ukraine conflict, President of Croatia, Zoran Milana Novis, said he doesn't want to be an American slave. Croatian President Zoran Milana Novis has claimed NATO, a military bloc of which Zagreb is a member, is waging a proxy war against Moscow in Ukraine. He also dismissed sanctions against Moscow as nonsense, adding that he does not want to be an American slave. Speaking to Croatian reporters in the city of Vukovar on Sunday, Milanovic said, among other things, Washington and NATO are waging a proxy war against Russia through Ukraine, as quoted by media outlet Istra 24. 
He went on to argue that the plan cannot be to remove Putin. The plan cannot be sanctions. Adding that such punitive measures are nonsense and we will not achieve anything with them. They go from war to war. And what should I be? An American slave? Croatia's president asked rhetorically. Mila Novius voiced his frustration with the U.S.-led military bloc's policies in the same interview in which he tore into Croatia's Prime Minister Andrzej Plenkovic over his latest Ukraine-related remark. Speaking to news channel France 24 on Saturday, Plenkovic said that Balkans the Balkans, excuse me, nation's lawmakers, who in mid-December didn't support the EU's program to train Ukrainian military personnel in member states, have failed to be the right, or rather, excuse me, failed to be on the right side of history. Commenting on the remark, Milanovic in turn slammed the premier for bringing disgrace to his country and to his democratic representatives in front of others. The Croatian president argued that this kind of behavior reached a low that is the bottom of the bottom. As for the EU's mission, and this is where I will get revelation Chapter 17, verse 16. Before I read it, pardon me, let me just clear all that. Now let's continue. Reading on, it says, as for the EU's mission, the Croatian president warned that it effectively means that for the first time in its history, the EU is participating in a war. This, according to Milanovic, is against the treaty on the function of the EU. In December 2022, Milanovic argued that having Ukraine service members train on Croatia's soil would bring war to the Balkan nation. He also insisted at the time that Ukraine is not an ally criticizing Brussels' decision last June to grant Kyiv candidate status as cynical. This concludes your article. The perspective of this article is that ultimately, America's allies in the NATO and the EU, which comprise the beast with seven heads and ten horns, will soon, on a much more obvious and intensified scale hate the whore according to biblical prophecy which is america babylon the great even as it is written here in revelation chapter 17 verse 16 which reads in the ten horns the ten horns represents the eu nations which thou sawest upon the beast the beast represents nato collectively the beast with seven heads and ten horns represents NATO and the EU with America being an extension of that which is nothing more than the revival of the Roman Empire because the beast is a pagan Roman Empire which came back in the form of NATO and the EU with America being an extension of that empire America is a woman that rise upon the beast. That is the reason why America is the head of NATO and the EU. These shall hate the whore. The whore is America, Babylon the Great. Other scriptures include Obadiah. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. All the men of her confederacy have brought her to the border. 
they have laid a wound under her, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. These shall hate the whore and make her desolate and naked. How will they make her desolate and naked? Through thermonuclear fire. According to biblical prophecy, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This is all metaphor for how they will destroy America, Babylon the Great, according to biblical prophecy. All these things are written, including in the book of Isaiah, the 13th chapter, the 14th chapter, Jeremiah 50, Revelation 18, many other chapters throughout the Holy Scriptures. It tells us about the coming imminent destruction of this great whore. Okay, in fact, before we read on the next article, let's get Isaiah 13. Verse 19 in Babylon. Babylon is America, the glory of kingdoms. America is the glory of kingdoms. All nations are here. They all come here. The beauty of the Chaldees and who are the modern day Chaldeans? The Edomites, beginning with their hegemony, their leadership, their elites. They are the modern day Chaldeans who were witches and warlocks in ancient Babylon, soothsayers, monthly prognosticators, charmers, refer to Isaiah 47. The beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Now we understand that the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah through fire being rained down from the heavens. You can refer to Genesis 19 and Genesis 20 to read the account. So the overthrowing of Babylon the Great will be as when Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh shall overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. That is to say that as the Lord had destroyed ancient Sodom and Gomorrah with nuclear fire, so will he do so unto Babylon the Great, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child, his excellency. Our Lord said in the book of Job, the 20th chapter, that a fire not blown shall consume him. Now, a fire typically requires air, oxygen, and fuel. This is known as a fire triangle, but a fire not blown is going to be kindled and destroy this land. And that is going to be through nuclear fire that is generated through the chain reactions of fusion and fission. Okay? To the splitting and the combining, in, in some cases, of atoms. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Why? Because they won't be able to. Because America, Babylon the Great, according to biblical prophecy, will be destroyed by thermonuclear fire. And after it has been destroyed, no one will inhabit this land except for wild beasts of the desert, unclean animals, doleful creatures, as it will say in the following verse. But, we'll, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures. The owls and owls, excuse me, shall dwell there, and satires shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their pleasant palaces and her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged so her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged because to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun and this season of the demise of the kingdom of the wicked is at hand Job chapter 20 verse 4 Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, 
that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Though his excellency mount up to the heavens through his military, his space force, his satellites, okay, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? So once he's <laughs> done and gone, the nation's going to ask, where is he? He shall fly away as a dream. When, when will this happen? After Esau Edom serves a thousand years of hardcore slavery in the kingdom, they're going to be exterminated, according to Obadiah. And that is part of biblical prophecy. He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Lucifer, son of the morning. Remember that song? I'm going to chase you out of earth. It says, The eye also which, see, which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. So, all these things are coming for the wicked. Now let's go back to the news articles. Davos. Global political elite skipping Davos. U.S., Chinese, and Russian leaders will not attend this year's World Economic Forum in the Swiss Alps, but they will more than likely attend it virtually. Or if they don't, they'll you know receive some form of summary. Nonetheless, anyway, it says the annual World Economic Forum WEF meeting in Davos, Switzerland, has kicked off on Monday with a number of top-tier leaders absent. U.S. President Joe Biden is skipping this year's gathering, along with French, and there's a lot of controversy currently surrounding Joe Biden. Along with French President Emmanuel Macron and new British Prime Minister Rashid Sunak, Russian President Vladimir Putin is also passing on the event along with the entire Russian business elite, which has been forced off the guest list by Ukraine-related sanctions. Chinese leaders Xi Jinping and Chinese businessmen will also miss the forum following the aftershocks of a recent spike in C-19 cases and troubles on the domestic stock market, which saw some $224 billion erased last year from the fortunes of China's wealthiest people. Of the group of seven G7 leaders, only German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is set to attend Davos this year, along with the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, that vampire. Despite the shrinking number of political leaders, this year's attendance list is rich in top managers among 2,700 2, participants in the official WEF sessions. We are likely to surpass the old record from 2020 with 600 global CEOs, including 1,500 C-suit level overall, according to WEF Head of Digital and Marketing, George Schmidt. Davos elite troubled by cost of living crisis. According to Bloomberg, a total of 116 billionaires are attending the WEF this year, a 40% rise from 10 years ago. Representatives from the U.S. will form the largest group with 33 delegates. Some 18 more billionaires are coming from Europe and 13 from India. Pardon me, including industrialists, Utam Adani, the world's fourth richest person, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. Established in 1971, the World Economic Forum is a not-for-profit foundation and its annual gathering in Davos is the world's biggest annual economics event. This year's form will run until January the 20th. This concludes the article. So keep an eye on the WEF and the things that will be said, the things that had been said already because I'm sure they've already, st already started because time zones dif uh, differentiate, stuff like that. A Poseidon weapon is in a transport container, still from a video. First nuclear propelled torpedoes for Russian mega submarine ready. The Poseidon weapons are among the latest additions to the country's nuclear deterrence. 
Russian shipbuilders have produced a full set of atomic Poseidon torpedoes, which will be carried by the nuclear mega submarine Belgorod, a source close to the Defense Ministry, as told TASS. The new boat will be armed with the weapons in the nearest future, the source stated, adding that the weapon system has completely tested on its various elements, including the propulsion system. Poseidon has an onboard nuclear reactor to generate propulsion and carries a powerful nuclear warhead as a payload. The first hints about its development were released by Russia in 2015. The weapon is yet to formally enter military service. The system is designed as a hard-to-intercept weapon of mass destruction that can deliver strategic naval assets such as military bases, shipyards, and aircraft carriers, strike groups. It can also inflict massive damage in coastal cities in the event of a full-blown nuclear war. While few details have been published about the torpedo, it is known to require a specialized platform for deployment. The Russian military reported plans to build up to four nuclear submarines configured for this mission. The first of them, the Belarod, was completed in 2019 and commissioned in July last year. It's not clear how many Poseidon torpedoes constitute a set for a vessel. Most assessments said the submarine can carry as many as six, but some suggested that up to eight can be deployed by a single boat. The Belgorod has reported the displacement of 30,000 tons submerged and a record length of 184 meters. Poseidon torpedoes are believed to be 16 to 24 mega- meters excuse me, long and are expected to be carried in transport containers attached to the hull of the submarine rather than in internal tubes. This concludes your article. I believe they said that the Poseidon's um, yield is about 50 to 100 megatons of TNT from the last time I'd seen an article surrounding it. Can't really remember, but you can check that out for yourselves to verify. EU facing diesel crisis with Russian ban looming. The bloc still relies on Moscow for 40% of imports according to ship tracking data. The EU will have a difficult time replacing Russian diesel when a ban in the country's seaborne oil products and an accompanying price cap pardon me, come into force on February the 5th, Bloomberg reported on Friday. So keep an eye on gas, ultimately energy, post-February 5th, on and post-February 5th. Okay, according to the outlet, citing ship tracking data from Vortiza, the EU imported about 220 million barrels of diesel type product from Russia in 2022. By December, some 40% of the fuel came to the bloc from the sanctioned country. While the region's reliance on Russian petroleum products was reduced last year, in 2021, more than half of an of all seaborne excuse me shipments into the EU and UK were Russian, and now they have to rely on far more expensive LNG <coughs> liquefied natural gas from the US. So cool bono. Think about it. Further illustrating Difficulty of replacing the barrel, which will fall. This is one of the reasons why the bee shall hate the whore. It will fall under the ban in less than three weeks. There's a total of rejigging in terms of diesel trade flows from the start of February. Mark Williams of Wood, McKenzie Consultancy, told the news outlet. Data showed that the EU has already stated to, started excuse me, to boost diesel shipments from Saudi Arabia and India. Analysts say that these shipments may be further increased this year through the number of new oil refineries that are soon to come online. Experts also point to the U.S. as having the potential to deliver more diesel to the bloc. Furthermore, China may indirectly aid the region in acquiring diesel supplies. The country's diesel-type fuel exports are forecast to be similar in volume to what the EU and UK used to receive from Russia prior to sanctions. While those shipments do not usually end up in Europe, they could replace volumes from other products. 
which would then be free to supply their fuel to the region. The China policy is a game changer, Williams told Bloomberg, adding that the country holds the key to all of the surplus refining capacity globally because China is one of the largest um, uh, consumers of, 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 of energy. Once they really begin to open up, man, it's going to send energy prices spiking ridiculously high. The EU could also use intermediary countries to get the fuel. <laughs> oh, boy, this is so funny. Turkey, not being a member state and thus not part of the sanctions against Moscow, could raise imports of Russian diesel and sell it to the bloc after refining, <laughs> which is also which is allowed under the terms of the ban and price cap. However, the final cost... See how these PC, you see how hypocritical and bugged that these people are, man. I'm following half of the whore. It says the final cost of the fuel may be much higher in, in that case. Experts warn that sanctions may result in Russian barrels disappearing from the global market altogether. If the country fails to find n- new non EU buyers, this would force Moscow to slash production and consequently lower overall supply and driver prices. There you go. It's coming. It's coming, coupled with high demand from who, especially China. This could lead to a worsening of the energy crisis in the bloc, and not just the bloc, but over here as well. Even though the U.S. is one of the biggest producers of energy, but they haven't been doing that. I wonder why. The higher the demand and the steeper the Russian diesel production decline, the more complicated and potentially fractured things could get. Eddie Gratti from SMP Global told the news outlet. This includes the article. So evils and only evils are coming. Okay. Western media pundits, pundit calls for genocide of all Russians. Biden documents may have jeopardized U.S. security. Democrat lawmaker. <laughs> oh, boy. NATO promises more heavy weapons for Ukraine. EU needs war economy. So, Dr. Doom predicts the world is heading for stagflation. But she's not wrong. It really is heading for a, a, a depression. Gas market to remain volatile for years so global imports of lng hit all-time high so this pretty much concludes it i'll leave the link to the articles in the description box of the lesson to close out i'll just get back ezekiel Chapter 7, verse 25. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and they shall meet on. So when destruction comes, people will attempt to seek peace for comfort, for security, for stability, because they're going to be promised peace and safety. But well, that is when destruction will come, if, will come suddenly, because it says, for when they shall say peace and safety, when their presidents, their governors, their mayors, their local leaders are going to be promising them peace and safety, that's when destruction will come upon them suddenly, even as it cometh. They shall seek peace and there shall be none. Because <laughs> there's no peace in the presence of destruction. Mischief shall come upon mischief and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. Oh, we got to find those men that were on the street corners. Telling us for years, for decades of these things. We got to find them. We got to go on the internet. We got to try to find them. But you won't be able to. All you'll ever get to find is a false prophets, and they won't even have the answers themselves. The blind lead the blind boat shall fall into the ditch. Okay? Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. And if you just so happen to come across a true man of the Lord, you're going to be told, Jeremiah 15, such as are for death to death, such as are for the sword to the sword, such as are for the famine to the famine, such as are for the captivity to the captivity. You're paraphrasing the scripture. 
because the four crowns will be, will be appointed over two-thirds of the nation of Israel. We say that the evil shall not overtake them or prevent them. Okay? The bad times that are to come, they're saying that those times are not going to overtake nor prevent them. And their pride. But the law shall perish from the priests and counsel from the ancients. So, TD Fakes won't have the answers. Creflo, give me your dollar. He won't have the answer. Joyce Myers, Joel Osteen, all these Edomite so-called pastors, they won't have the answers, man, for you ninjas out there, okay, of the tribe. So with that, I conclude this lesson. Laura's Dunga was edifying and informative to the elect. Until the next, Shalom to the elect.